Resolve 14, scene stabilization, take one, marker. All right, one of the areas where I feel Resolve is really unparalleled would be its stabilization tool and how simple it is to use and how powerful it is in that it avoids warping and a bunch of the things you get in other stabilization plugins and effects. So let's quickly show you how to do that. So here we have a shot of a guy falling on the ground. He starts to shoot. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of camera wobble. This was totally handheld on uh, some kind of shoulder mount. So stabilization. Basically, it is you're in the color page. You go over to the tracker and under the window you go down to stabilizer. Um, Resolve 14 has a new more powerful stabilizer to be honest I can't tell much of a difference but that's because I got great results with the old one so it's not like doesn't seem so much better I, the old one was great but supposedly it's better so we want to stabilize this shot. So let's talk about the parameters and all of that. All right, so you have not many options here, which I kind of like. It's very simple, easy to use. The big ones, I would say, first would be perspective. So you have, pers you have three options on how you're going to track it. Perspective, similarity, and translation. Which if you're like me, I had no idea what that meant until I finally looked in the manual. But you don't have to because I'm going to tell you right now. So translation is simply going to only track the x, y values. So moving up and down, moving left and right. Um, similarity is going to add in zoom and rotation. So that would be like After Effects basic uh, tracker and stuff. And then perspective is going to be more like 3D and like warping and things like that as far as it's more than a in and out rotation and left right up down it's more of a 3d movement is basically the way to think about it so usually i just do perspective usually the default settings are actually going to get you just fine results but the other day i did have to simplify it to translation just because it was it was basically a music video that was entirely handheld had to stabilize it a bit and so just wanted to prevent it from getting too crazy. For this instance though, I mean this is a pretty stacked shot, we really don't need to, but we're going to go ahead and do perspective anyways. So then you have cropping ratio, which cropping ratio is how extreme you're willing to stabilize it. So the more you stabilize it, the more it has to like scale up to fix it, which is going to lower the resolution. And if you don't, you know, you're going to have weird black bars coming in because it's trying to keep that point you know, in the same place. So cropping ratio is basically how much you are willing to scale it up. A perfect 1.0 means there will be virtually no movement in the shot. Zero means there's no stabilization. Um, smoothing tries to take those points of movement and basically smoothen it out so that, you know, it might not be totally stabilized, but it'll be smoother motion. So it's, not, it's less jerky, less jarring to the viewer. Or if you hit camera lock, it takes that out and it basically just locks the whole shot, which would pretty much kind of be like the ratio being at a one, but with uh, smoothing kind of out of that factor. And then you, you can turn zoom off if you don't want it to zoom up, but then you know you'll have the black bars coming in. And uh, I don't know why you would want that. But the option is there. So if we stabilize it, it analyzes pretty quickly. Um, not quickly enough, I'll tell you that, because uh, this is this is cool. So, how are you guys doing today? Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Okay, oh, hey, it's about done. So, you know, this this shot doesn't have much. As you can see, the little graph is pretty simplistic. Uh, if you did want to turn it off to compare it to before, you can hit bypass, and you'll see the little scaling. You can kind of also do that just to tell how much you're having to scale it. Um, yeah, so let's, let's watch that real quick. Cool. So as you can see, the is not locked off. It is simply smoother and just less of that kind of jittery camera motion, which personally I like better. It's a little more professional. And I don't have to scale it up much because it's so minimal. Let's look at what it would look like if we did lock it off, you know. You have to restabilize. Okay. 
All right, so I just finished, so let's watch it and see how it is now. Okay, and that really is the problem of when you try to lock it off, is basically you're gonna get motion blur where there shouldn't be. So because it's still now, you don't want any, you, your eye tells you there should be no motion blur. So yeah, I usually, unless you have to or you can get away with it, I recommend just smoothing it, which would be, you know, go back to a 0.5 uh, cropping ratio, and you can also mess with the smoothness, depending if you want to try to smoothen out some of the jerkiness a little better. But yeah, that's DaVinci Resolve Stabilizer. Super handy, helpful, really can uh, fix a lot of those problematic shots that are just maybe could have been unusable before, but now, hey, now you can. So yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, really appreciate it, and uh, we'll have more coming your way very soon. And uh, thanks for watching.